So many times in the conversations with friends, I brought up the subject of how ridiculous it is to actually design a floor plan of an apartment. Well, the argument is with billion apartments worldwide, you could always just find and copy a solution that fits your criteria, your building. It's a big data problem, right? And we use artificial intelligence to solve big data problems. That's the whole deal. And in the recent times, we have finally seen people using AI algorithms to design floor plans. So I thought it's time to address the matter and confirm my suspicion that very soon there will be no reason for an architect to design an apartment unless they want to do that as a hobby. And we have the story of an architectural profession potentially losing yet another battle with automation. And an architectural profession still not caring, not paying attention, just slowly getting boiled like a frog in the water. One of the most common jobs for an architect is to design floor plans. Sculpting the building in space is one thing and often represents one very, very small fraction of architecture. Most buildings, unfortunately, are simple boxes with repetitive openings. And most of them have horizontal surfaces that we know as floors or ceilings, depends from which side you look at them. And the non-architect usually thinks they're not capable of dividing that empty outline in some sensible way and that their architect's friend can do a much better job. Well, in most cases, they're right, because architect, the architect's friend has some experience in doing it and because they can maybe look at a 2D drawing and imagine the 3D space a bit better than you. But architects are far from perfect. We all know apartments that have some ridiculous solutions. So, nevertheless, here comes the main thought process. Buildings are mostly boxes, unfortunately, but as long as the money is the determining factor and investor, investors are uncreative business people that just want to drain every dollar, it will remain so. And if we imagine a floor plan of an apartment, although it seems like there is a huge amount of possible design variations and combinations, today the world huge is very relative. In today's terms of powerful hardware and software at our disposal, the possible ways in which you can arrange rooms and furniture in an apartment seems actually very, very finite, very graspable. People usually think, no way, every building is unique, different climate, orientation, people needs, etc, etc. But again, they're thinking in terms of pen and paper. They think their brain is a necessary middleman to solve this riddle. But in terms of the power of computation of today, when millions and millions of different floor plans could be generated and evaluated within minutes, the number of parameters is actually pretty small. In a standard apartment, there are just a couple of room types that will always be there. You will have a bathroom, kitchen, a living room, usually a hallway that connects the spaces. And as you grow, you can add more and more bedrooms. And every room has some very standard furniture, right? The living room has sofa, the dining room has the dining table. Bedrooms will have the beds, night tables, closets. And again, if you think about it, especially in computational terms, the number of combination is actually very, very finite and limited. limited. Now think about this. Only in the US, there are around 100, 118 million housing units, houses or apartments. So we can safely conclude that there is at least 2 billion in the world. And let us concentrate only on apartments for now. There is at least a billion of those. And as we said, whether you are in Jakarta, Kiev, Buenos Aires or Oslo, the apartment buildings will unfortunately be boring boxes. And the outlines of the apartments will be very simple and similar. So my point is, if you design an apartment building right now, on your own, coming completely out of your brain, and in your building you have outlined some apartments, and you are ready to solve the floor plan, by simple probability there is a huge chance that an apartment like that already exists in the world. Not only that, there's probably 10,000 of them, and at least 500 out of those 10,000 are perfectly solved. So do you really need to waste time? Or wouldn't it be cool just to get those 500 apartments and copy one of them? The reason why we cannot do that is because we do not have this one unique huge database of floor plans. Maybe someone will get inspired and make one, but that would be a start. Then a simple AI algorithm would just compare your outline, outline with the library, including your orientation, position of windows, your climate, etc. And simply find a couple of apartments with the same characteristics that can work for you. Why waste time in designing? Unless, of course, you enjoy the process, in which case you can do it as a hobby. Now, what I described here would be kind of a brute force approach, something that I think would make most of floor plan design obsolete. However, it, requ it requires a huge effort and investment in building this da database. And there are also other ways. A team of people from the Walgreen Ar Architects from Sweden made a small uh, floor plan generator. 
Now, the doc documentation on this is scarce, but I'm assuming they're not using any kind of AI or machine learning algorithms. As I said, the number of combinations possible when designing a floor plan, and here it seems it is constrained to a rectangular out outline, is very graspable. You can easily make a ton of conditions. You know those if-then statements in programming? And if you make enough of if-thens, you can get something like this. Another approach is using the AI algorithms. And in this case, something called GAN, a Generic Adversarial Net Neural Networks, at Harvard and before that in the paper by, by Huang and Zheng called Architectural Drawings Recognition and Generation Through Machine Learning. The idea is to train the computer first to take a picture of a floor plan and then recognize the rooms, the kitchen, the bedroom, the living room, etc. And afterwards to train the algorithm to develop its own disposition of rooms on a specific outline and fill them with furniture. At the moment, this is done on an image recognition level, using something called pix to pix GAN model. So it is not intelligent in the geometrical and spatial sense we might want. The algorithm does not work with lines and walls in the way we conceptualize them. It sees pixels and compares them in the way it would compare photographs of people. But maybe that is all we need for now. The point being that if we create a library of floor plans, not only does an algorithm can find one that fits perfect to our apartment, but it could use the library to learn how to design. So not find and copy an existing plan that fits to your needs, by, but create, design a new plan that fits your needs. So once this neural network gets enough training, the library itself becomes irrelevant. It will be able to design floor plans that are functional and optimized, and then we will be able to just tweak them a bit. As I have said many, many times before, the AI algorithm will become our assistant, a human machine team will outdo a human or a machine for a couple of more years. And our assistant will be answering questions that we cannot and giving advice based on the calculations that we cannot perform with our brains. And the truth is, whether we simply compare and find an existing apartment that fits our parameters, or if we let a trained neural network design it for us, and then we just correct it a little bit, no architect will soon be able to say to the client, we need three months now to design this building. Unfortunately, the architectural profession will soon lose this battle with automation as well. And again, we need to jump on this vehicle before it drives over us. We could become the ones that control the automation. We can become the ones who develop the algorithms and think about applying them instead of waiting for someone else to do that. It's the boring old tune I have been singing from the beginning. The automation is coming and we can either be the one in control or let someone else do it and break off yet another piece of services an architect can provide. We can learn how to program and automate, or we can sit on the sidelines and let the future hit us on the head. So which side do you want to be on? I included the link to the papers and sites I mentioned so you can check them out. Subscribe to stay updated, share this video and stay free.